Unit 1. Patients with depression. Mental health is defined as a condition that permits a state of optimal physical, mental and social well-being and is not merely the absence of disease. Mental health is related to the promotion of well-being, the prevention of mental disorders and the treatment and rehabilitation of people affected by mental disorders. A person's mental health affects different aspects of life. For example, mental health involves having a good relationship with family and having supportive friends with the ability to reflect upon and share feelings. Regarding leisure time, mental health involves having hobbies exercising on a regular basis, and having regular vacation time. A mental health problem interferes with emotional and or social abilities. It is a negative mental experience that is part of every day. Mental illness or disorder is defined as a syndrome characterized by a clinically significant disturbance in an individual's cognition, emotion, regulation, or behavior. The condition re reflects dysfunction of the psychological, biological, or de developmental processes underlying mental functioning. Possible barriers to seeking treatment for physical health problems. Stigma, fear of hospitalization, health workers regarding pain as a symptom of mental illness, waiting times, health workers prioritizing mental health problems over physical health problems, transport issues, fear or unfamiliar places, financial constraints. Physiotherapists working <coughs> in the general healthcare setting will treat patients with comorbid mental health issues. It is important to understand the nature of the mental health problem, what signs and sim symptoms may be present, and how to modify assessment and interventions to best engage the person to provide optimum holistic health care. Depression. It refers to a wide range of mental health problems characterized by the absence of a positive effect, a loss of interest and enjoyment in ordinary things and experiences, persistent low mood, and a range of associated emotional, cognitive, physical, and behavioral symptoms. Severity of depression is classified using the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th uh, edition, criteria as mild, five or more symptoms with minor functional impairment, moderate, symptoms or functional impairment are between mild and severe, and severe, most symptoms present and interfere with functioning, with or without psychotic symptoms. <coughs> Surveys conducted in general populations have found that the lifetime prevalence of depression is in the, run, the range of 10% to 15%. Persistent depressive disorder. Persistent forms of depression that last for two years or longer represent a substantial proportion of depressive disorders. Within the literature, four subtypes can be distinguished. 1. Dysthymia, 
is defined as a condition with mild depressive symptoms persisting for at least two years. 2. Chronic major depression refers to a more severe condition that meets the full criteria for major depression continuously for a minimum of two years. Patient, patients who have recovered to the point at which they no longer meet full criteria for a major depressive episode but continue to experience significant symptoms for at least two years as referred to as three. Recurrent major depression with incomplete remission between episodes. The superimposition of a major depressive episode on antecedent um, dysthymia is referred to as four, double depression. In the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the new diagnostic category of persistent depressive disorder was introduced subsuming dysthymic as well as chronic major depressive disorders. The mean length of persistent depression is between 17 to 30 years and the lifetime prevalence for persistent depressive disorders is estimated to range from 3% to 6% in current epidemiological studies from the U.S. and Australia. In comparison to acute forms of depression, persistent depressive disorders are associated with longer treatment duration, increased loss of physical well-being, increased comorbidity, more severe impairments in social, psychological, and emotional functioning, increased health care utilization, a more frequent suicide attempts and hospitalization. Description of the intervention. Overall, a large number of different interventions exist for the treatment of unipolar depression, including psychological, pharmacological, and combined psychological and pharmacological therapies. Evidence from randomized controlled trials as well as meta-analysis suggests that these interventions are effective in the acute treatment of depression, including persistent forms of depression. Still, there is also evidence that some patients do not respond to treatment, do not reach complete remission, and develop persistent residual symptoms in the long term. It is estimated that half of the people suffering from depressive disorders are developing a chronic curse. Moreover, acute phase treatments often fail to prevent relapse, which is defined as the return of symptoms of depression before a full remission has been achieved, and recurrence, which is defined as the appearance of another new episode of depression after full remission of a previous episode has been achieved in major depression. For example, after a scheduled termination of acute phase cognitive therapy, relapse or recurrence rates were found to be 29% in the first year and 54% in the second year. In this same study, even when other depression-specific psychological therapies and even higher doses of pharmacotherapy were used after the acute phase treatment, relapse and recurrence rates were still high. One study has shown that 30% to 50% of patients considered to be remitted still have to deal with residual depressive symptoms. Physical exercise has been suggested as an efficient complementary treatment to reduce symptoms of depression since it reduces cost with drugs and hospitalizations and may also improve physical health and physiological stress responses. There are several hypotheses regarding the physiological and psychological mechanisms by which exercise impacts on mental health, 
such as enhancement of the synthesis and liberation of neurotrophic factors, as well as angiogenesis, neurogenesis, and plasticity. There are recent meta-analyses of Cochrane collaboration that have investigated the effectiveness of exercising the treatment of depression in adults compared with no treatment or a comparator intervention. Moreover, some studies have shown that physical exercise may improve physical and global self-esteem quality of life. 